What's up, family? It's the Mixtape Queens. We are back with another dope fire episode of the Mixtape Queens podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Chop it up. Okay, make sure y'all follow, like, subscribe. Run it up. Thank you. Okay, let me just go ahead and hop straight into this. Today's guest is so, so dope. I can't even really put it into too many words. This king is extremely talented, and he is an artist based out of New York City, and his name is Will Be Free. Okay? Yes, yes. Welcome, king. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate y'all. And, you know, it's going to be a great episode. One day we will all be free. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be free. I believe that. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and thank you for messaging us and reaching out to us because it really changed our life when we heard your song for the first time mm-hmm. from your album, uh, Wounds to Wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, your lyrics are powerful. Um, there's beauty, there's mm-hmm. pain, and your message is one of activism for. I would say the spirit, the soul, um, to be free. And, and, you know, that gives us hope. It, it means the world to us because our duty here and our mission is to spread the music and the love around the world. So mm-hmm. we just want to say thank you for reaching out to us. Yeah. Welcome to the family. Yeah, thank We're you. locked in now. We're, We're locked life. in forever, locked ever, forever, ever. 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 <laughs> and you know, just yeah. to speak on that, you know, like the investments that you make, algorithm, you know, mm. the algorithm is real, but it also, the investments that you make in yourself and the algorithm also allows relationships like this. Because we see a million things. And all I did was sort of energy um, and impulsively just say, hey, this is a vibe. And we reached out uh, to the queen. So it wasn't like, you know, we see a million things. Know, but when I saw y'all, y'all kept popping up and just how y'all presented yourselves and the energy. So it's not just, it's just not a thank you towards me. It's both of us because it's the work that we put in for us to allow each other to see each other. You know, so it's definitely all y'all work. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so, I, mean, the world. That's, I mean, it's really cool to hear a dope artists like yourself, like, hit us up. And it happens more often than we even think about, like, we get messages from artists out of nowhere and they're just like, we, we really like your vibe. Yeah. There's something about that energy that's there. And I'm like, honestly, if I could tell anybody anything at the beginning of this episode, it's that your authenticity and your genuineness will bring the right people around you. 100%. 100%. One, a million percent. Yeah. Yeah. This is how it works. Yeah. <laughs> this is how it works. That's the law of like attraction, period, across the board. You know? Yeah, we put our heart and soul into this. So, yeah. You know, it's my mission to prove people wrong. I hear this all the time. Rap music ain't what it used to be. Rap music is, you know, gotten worse. And, you know, that's not true. Oh. I think if people think like music isn't what it used to be. They're just not looking in the right place. And that's why mm-hmm. we're the mixtape queens. That's why we dedicate our life to uh-huh. spreading the music. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey. And then everybody just wants everything easily consumed. Nobody wants to take a second. They just mm-hmm. want you to bring them the 10 course meal in their face. They eat it and that's it. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? When it's worth having, when it's worth um, enjoying, um, when you can have those Thanksgiving leftovers every day for a week and still love it the way you loved it on Thanksgiving, you know what I mean? That's the work you put in. But people just want, people just want fast food, you know? And, um, it's sad, but yeah. we, we still gonna fight. Okay, yeah. period. Yeah, we're still here. The <laughs> yeah. people with the heart and the people yeah. with the deeper message. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's our vibe. We, we like, we appreciate all art and all forms. And, you know, but we would consider ourselves more of conscious rappers. Mm-hmm. We have a song called Third Eye Open. Yeah. And, um, we're working on a new, uh, a new project that's okay. all okay. conscious. It's all conscious rap. Okay. A little, little <laughs> bit of, a little bit of sauce. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's our vibe too. Yeah. So, um, it's refreshing to, 
to hear your your lyrics. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us how um, your background? You say you grew up in foster care and yeah. moving around a lot. Mm-hmm. You know these struggles. How did that um, portray through your music? I think, not I think, everything in my life. I've been weird. Like my fashion sense has always been, I've never been a mannequin. Um, tastefully I've gotten away with it, but I was always dressed how I wanted to dress. Obviously you evolved. Obviously I was, I was with the big, huge three X white t-shirts crew back in the day, but you know, we, <laughs> we all evolved, but from basketball as a lefty awkward. Um, I've always stood out. And I think with music, you know, the real, artistry of it is being able to be vulnerable. None of us want to be vulnerable. Uh, we all, even myself, when I first started, you know, I want to have surface conversations, you know, and, and for us to be, to be free, we really have to be able to dissect and diagnose who we really are as people, um, as individuals and together. So music is just like my outlet. I know what part of my purpose is being a canvas. So, allowing you to speak good, bad, and differently, and me just being confident who I am and knowing what my purpose is and just to keep going with it. I know it's a lot of vulnerabilities in there, but hopefully you, you can look at yourself like, damn, okay, I'm not by myself, or I can do this, mm-hmm. or or that happened to you too. Because so many people, so many times, you know, sorry if I'm talking, but as a child growing up, there was no such thing as trauma or mental illness. So I was, I looked at, like, I was a crazy kid. I was a dude storming out, I was a dude trying to figure out what my parents were. I was a dude trying to figure out why their life like this and why I'm like this. Um, so I'm out, I'm back. I'm out lashing. I was a dude going to uh, the after school program with the with the social workers. You know what I mean? Where everybody else going home and everybody looking at you. You know, it was no such thing. You know what I'm saying? And even with my friends, I could tell them a little bit. I can't tell them too much because it becomes a competition. Oh, I'm going through this too. Oh, oh, but it ain't what I did. You know what I'm saying? So then, then you keep yourself more quiet and reserved and then you become voiceless. You know, you get caught up in becoming voiceless because does anybody care or does it matter? So, you know, I'm just trying to be the voice and it's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah. Okay. I love, first of all, I love what you just said because You do become voiceless when you are surrounded by so many people that are too loud to even want to hear you. Yes. And when you're in that room and in that space, you will learn quick at any age to retract yourself and remove yourself out of certain situations and circumstances. And those of you that don't do that become involved in a vicious cycle. It just keeps playing over and over and over again. Now you're damaging your whole like psyche and everything. And it's a trauma bond like that you're trying to create with these people that are not that they're bad people, but they're not your people. And you do believe it or not have your people. I think it's important that you just said that we've never had a guest say that before. Um, But it's really important to know that for yourself and the fact that you had that at such a young age, like, this doesn't fit me. You know, I really am the, the, what do you, what do people call it? The oddball out? Yeah. Because people think you're weird because you're not like them, you know? And I think it's interesting that maybe we've all had those circumstances and friends where you might be trying to express something and just have a moment of vulnerability, (laughs) you know, a a moment of vulnerability with people that are supposed to be your friends. And then they, it's almost like their trauma is so bad that it overcomes whatever you're talking about. And they're like, I've been through that, you know, you overcame that though. Yeah. Yeah, You overcame that though. It was like a no for you. You automatically had that. Which well, is I really automatically cool. have it. I can't lie. Like, <laughs> in, 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 as a human, we don't change until we get fed up. Mm. So I allow my friends, okay, maybe I'm wrong. All right. It took me a while. Like, you grow up with them. You, you have memories and those memories, you know what I'm saying? So it took a while. But when I got fed up, it was like, I know, but you have to get fed up. Relationships, mm. friendships. I mean, when there's love involved, regretfully, you have to be fed up. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, principle wise, something happens when you become fed up. But I was just principle wise, things kept happening. Knows that I don't play with my principles. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so I don't, I'm unapologetic about that because I think principles are everything, no matter how big, how big or small something may be. Principles are everything, you know. Um, right. But yeah, at some point in my twenties, I'm just like nah, and I had to start all over, and I lost everything, and I dealt with the because I don't gossip either. My actions are my actions. I don't mm. convince people. I don't. I don't. You know, when you're younger, you're in that you're in that mindset. You know what I'm saying? But as I got older and I evolved, my actions are my actions. And I stand on that. I know every single action I've made. So if you're going to, if you feel confident talking about or doing whatever you do for whatever energy to, for your, that's between you and the higher powers. I have nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? So I just stepped away. My actions became my actions. I just started over. I fell down a few times, but it's the most amazing I ever felt in my life because I have no mm. shackles per se. No, I'm not. I love that. And I relate to that yeah. like so hard. Yeah. How do we yeah. even know what our principles are if we don't mm -hmm. do those struggles? hundred yeah. percent. Yes. Yes. Yeah, those struggles are everything for us to learn what our boundaries are. You know, it's hard, but that's, you know, some of us get it. Some of us catch oh. on. And Later. Yeah. You know, yeah. some people aren't lucky like us. What's crazy is I kind of think of it almost like a book. Nobody can determine that chapter except for you, you know, it's and every chapter is not going to be the same as the last one, you know. And I mean, that's the uniqueness of it. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. And it's yeah, also that's... willing to be get it's also willing to get through the book. So many mm -hmm. people judge you off your first chapter or just judge you off. the In 2024, so many people judge you off the cover art mm -hmm. of the book. You know what I'm saying? So it's like damn <laughs> like you you know like you can't even get to the second chapter really you know what i mean that part yeah, yeah. that part and meanwhile right. you're in this tough environment you know and it's 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 shaping us that's our struggles are our biggest blessing for growth and you're being called weird or even just feeling weird you mm -hmm. know you're calling yourself weird when truly you're an artist and in that environment it's not really embraced or nurtured yeah. so you know you also are like dressing different. That's that's a form mm -hmm. of a true artist or a sign of a true artist. Mm -hmm. Somebody that is free to be themselves. Yeah, not blending in. Yeah. Okay. And how can you be individual and unique if you are blending in with everybody else yeah. doing the same thing everybody same else thing. is doing? Exact same yeah. thing. Yeah. Insert individualism. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no. I relate to being like feeling like I had a mental illness or something was wrong with me. Um, like if I was angry at a young age, but yeah. a lot of times it's because we have gifts. I think we have gifts and it's taken as mental illness or, you know, it's just misunderstood. And I mean, it feels like we found our calling. So I just hope that that message can reach out to somebody else that if you're not doing what you love every single day, mm. what are you really doing? What are you doing here? Why are you like, what do you want from life? hundred yeah. percent. Think about it. That's facts. I mean, really think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Give yourself a moment. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned you're in a, a, a rap duo. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of when you started taking it real serious and, um, tell us more about your journey with being an actual rapper, like in the business, like uh, managing yourself or um, oh. branding yourself. What What are some of the struggles you faced um, during that time? So when I was in a duo, I was more so like a comedian. I mean, I'm I'm a comedian, like I'm not a comedian, but you know, I'm a very sarcastic, funny, you know, whatever. I, that's my leadership style, like in my management. So um. I was more so like just trying to be funny, ad lib, stuff like that. You know, I didn't really like rap until it was serious topics. You know, uh, my partner, he could just rap about everything, funny, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really start like rapping, rap until it really hit me mentally. If it was about the club or women, I was just talking, like just laughing or whatever. Um, but then I, I just realized in that how my, how much my words meant to people around me in my community and in, the streets and in that industry where you're trying to go out, perform for everybody, open up for everybody and get known, I just started to realize how much I couldn't play around. You know, and then with that, you know, I was 
as a solo, I was signed after we broke up musically. As a solo, I was signed. You know, I was just put in positions where I, I wasn't really willing to conform. Um, mm -hmm. So I was shelved one time. I was denied the other time because I wasn't really willing. To, not really. I wasn't willing to do some of those things that you hear about. Um, I wasn't really. I wasn't willing to talk about things that don't matter to me. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't. I wasn't willing. I'm not willing to glorify things that don't truly matter. Um, so in 2015, I kind of lost everything. Cause it basically was like, okay, uh, you know. So that's when uh, I went through a few years of depression, gained a lot of weight. Then 2020, um, again, I didn't know my mom like that. You know, they left me in the system. But I just realized how much hate, I didn't know how much hate I had for her until she passed away um, in October 2020. I, f I literally found out the day while the funeral was going on. Because, you know, that was uh, COVID. So mm -hmm. I got the link. I got the link somehow, but the funeral was over. Uh, but I found out the day the funeral was going on. And it changed my life. So I just didn't know. You know, you think you're okay. You don't know why you do this or why you've done this like this your entire life. Hmm. You know, you don't know why when someone says this, you act like this with that situation all the time, your entire life, you know, or, or whatever, since she was a teen or since that person said this, you know, my mom's called me Oasis Firm. And I've always believed that. I, it's still a corner of my mind that believes that, that I fight through every day, you know? Um, but when she passed away, her, her last breath gave me my first breath of even appreciating her her because all the problems that I have with her, she could have aborted me and I, I couldn't even be sitting here right now. Like I think about those things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm here. I have the ability to fight. She could have cut that off before I even came out the womb. You know what I'm saying? She could have shut that down. You know, so there's so many things that I do have love and affinity for her for. And mm -hmm. me speaking with you is like, how can I hate my mother? I'm here speaking with you. Mm. That's beautiful to me because I I, I do understand that feeling of uh, your mother passing, though mine is in a different light. Um, I do feel you on like her last breath being your first breath, because I do remember everything in my life shifting in a matter of seconds. Like I, I was no longer that person yeah. that I was five seconds ago yeah. because of that first breath. And I think it's really beautiful that you can take something that is obviously like very traumatizing to hear your parents say something like that to you, but also know that somewhere where you couldn't see inside of her bones, truly, she loved you enough to let you even be here. Yeah. Whether she recognized it or not. She loved you enough to birth you and let you actually live a life, which is, you know, something I say all the time is like, some people aren't always meant to be a parent, but that doesn't mean that they didn't, you know, it wasn't their purpose Reproduce. to give birth to somebody because everybody is uniquely special. Everybody that's here on this planet is uniquely special. And we've been given that opportunity truly through our mothers and our fathers, but because of our mothers, we were ushered into this world. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, I mean, I, I feel you so hard because you know what? You have to give gratitude where gratitude is due. You know, you see all the different opportunities you get. You see, you get to meet these different amazing people and you wouldn't be able to do that without that, that ushering. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our parents, you know, they just do the best that they can with what they were taught. We're not given the owner's manual to life and, and told how to do it. And a lot of those traits are generational yeah. and, and, you know, it's encoded in our DNA. And that's why we're here to, to break those curses. Yep. 100%. Because, like, Yeah, just one hundred percent. Because as I get older, I'm I'm in my thirties, but I'm still a kid. Mm. Like I, in my way of thinking, yeah, I'm adult, but I'm still a kid. And 
yeah, I'm mature, I'm responsible. I'm not talking about that, but like in my mm-hmm. mind, I still want to go to Knicks games. I still want to watch my go to my favorite con- concert. I still want to chill with my friends from time to time. I still want to like. So how can I judge them? They were still kids trying to figure it out in whatever mm-hmm. way they can figure it out and however they did it. And like I came out with a project right after she passed called Learn, Unlearn, Relearn, you know, and it's like everything was basically, it ran in our family until it ran into us. So there's mm. no excuses after us, you know what I mean? Like if you decide to have a child, you have to decide to be responsible and, and, and provide that village around that child. We can't, that's one of my biggest things too. We can't dwell on whatever happened to us before. What are we going to do about it? Mm. Or what are we here for? Like, what are you going to do about it? Okay, cool. I hear you've been through a lot. I heard you. I'm here for you. What's, what we about to do? Mm. What we about to do? I'm not about to listen to sad songs all day and dwell in it. I hate dwelling. I'm not dwelling in nothing. I'm not dwelling in nothing. Even when I have my bad days, I take a minute. I'm not dwelling on. I'm not going to dwell. You know, and this is like learn, unlearn, relearn, because every day we do that. Every day we have to get rid of some of that mm-hmm. bad toxicity and, and relearn some something. And it just it ran in our family until it ran into us. Now it's our, mm-hmm. our our time to change whatever, whatever precursors, whatever, whatever. What are we going to do about it? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I already knew this was going to be a powerful episode. <laughs> I already knew it was just just based off of the conversations we had had before and just really getting to know you as an artist, but not just an artist, as a person, like as a fully formed creative, because that's what I look at this like when we get to have these conversations and we get to make these connections and hear these powerful stories, their testimonies, you know, and there's a lot of uh, glory that we personally have that we get to experience by sharing with other creatives like this, you know, you start recognizing, oh, I am valuable in this sense. And as you're speaking the words to your, you know, to the people that you're talking to, you're actually speaking to self because a lot of the messaging you might be saying is like, you've never, you've never heard yourself say that before. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, going out. Yeah. yeah. And it, I'm hopeful that anybody out there that's listening can get value from this mm-hmm. and open your eyes in the morning and think about compassion and love and just see where it takes you. Just try it. Just try it. You might be mad at a lot of people, but just for one day, just wake up and try it. Try to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Even if all you got is a cardboard box or some old shirts, put that shirt on and be so grateful for it. You know what? And love yourself. The fact that you just said that, like, even if you only got, like, a couple pairs of shirts, like, there are literal homeless people who have been homeless, living in the gutter, I mean, the sewage, that are happier than people that have all the money in the world. And there, there's power in that. There's power in knowing that that's, like, your true form of knowing yourself, like, I'm I'm my happy happiest by myself, whether I have it or I don't have it, whether I, you know, and I'm not letting other things that have happened to me in life, you know, hold me back from being that that joyful person, because that's what we're here to do is to find joy in the things that we do, you know, no matter the circumstances. If you don't find joy in your everyday, you should work on that, you know. But yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Can you take us through the process of writing a song? Mm-hmm. How do you uh, come up with your lyrics? Do you write it? You freestyle? Um, you know, do you start with a beat? Honestly, it's an accumulation of everything. Um, for me, I'm not someone that can just write. I can just, oh, I'm about to write. I have to be inspired. Um, but it could be the smallest thing. It could be a child that came in my restaurant smiling, happy. It could be the smallest thing. It doesn't matter what it is, but I'm not someone that could just write. It can be a beat that I heard. It can be mm-hmm. a song that I hear, and I don't feel like that person represented that song like they should have. You know, it could be anything, you know. Um, 
but then I just get inspired and I go. Sometimes I can write 10 songs in a row. Sometimes I write one verse, but it's wherever the inspiration takes me. I don't rush things. Like I don't force myself. Um, I have long studio sessions because I don't rush. Um, and I just like to be in the moment, but it's no set. For me, it's an accumulation of all. I get inspired by everything. But once I'm inspired, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm freestyling, I'm recording on my phone, I'm doing everything, but there's no really set thing for me. Um, it's just life experiences happening and I get thoughts and my thoughts start going crazy. Yeah, we can hear that through your music. Yeah. On um, Wounds of Wisdom, we really, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm really impressed because yeah. of the way it made me feel. I haven't mm-hmm. felt like that in a long time because even with conscious music, which we, you know, just like you said in 2015, you change. It's not mm. all, like hip hop changed in a big way because it's not all about the material things and kind of bringing more of a, a Nas effect or a, mm-hmm. a common, a, a deeper conscious um, thought to hip hop. And, you know, and nowadays we hear a lot of that, but it's not necessarily as, as hard. Like, it's, I guess what I'm really talking about is the beats yeah, and just your delivery. It, 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 it brings me back. There's a certain yeah. energy a certain energy about the way that you deliver your lyrics uh, on any of the beats. Honestly, the one that really spoke to me the most was Give Me Peace. And I don't know what it was about that beat and like the way you were rapping, the way you were saying those lyrics. And I was just like, this, this is, this is like, it sounds familiar to my soul because though I know the the 90s is like barely millennial i have a millennial baby and i remember yeah. hearing certain styles and just the way it was delivered and the energy behind it was so different and it 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 could elevate you back then but you know it like yeah. she said that like people say that you know hip hop isn't what it used to be but truly it's really the artist that you're looking for isn't always mainstream yeah, how that does part. that change? Like mainstream, it, is there still underground? Is there still mainstream? As you know, even one of your favorite artists only has a thousand followers. Yeah, is that yeah. underground nowadays? I guess popularity. Underground. I don't know if it's underground. I know it's probably it's mainstream, but it's that part. It's that like for me, and also when I like when it moves to wisdom, everything matters to me. So there's no, and I've also learned that as an artist evolving. Everything has to matter from the production. Like, you know, I always believed in my, my, my writing, my lyrics. So I always knew I could rap over anything. But how does mm-hmm. that message, how do you get that message to the world? Is the world going to receive it? Oh, yeah, you killed it, but the beat is trash. Or like, it's to the pick better. So with this, I specifically worked, worked with this producer. Um, I'm coming out with a deluxe version uh, to display my full artistry, but I specifically worked with this producer to get my sound, you know, um, to to make sure I deliver everything how I want to be. And my, my artists like there's people that's from my city. There's there's infamous people. There's the Kendricks, or there's the Reasons, um, there's the JIDs, there's the Coles. Um I love um who's the guy with Naomi? I'm having a brain fart. Um, Cordet. I love Cordet. I loved his mm-hmm. first album, not necessarily the second one. But I just love vulnerability, man. Anderson Pack. I just want people to be vulnerable, you know. Everybody don't have the cars and the jewelry, mansions. And don't get me wrong, if that's your truth, that's your truth, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I can't say nothing about that. But it's just like, also, so many people are going through so many more things that that matter in everyday life. You know, like, mm-hmm. like that, that helps every day, their day-to-day. You know, I don't know if a lot of this music helps people from their day-to-day. It's like five percent of the world that can relate to what they're talking about, you know. Ten mm. percent of the world, you know. So, you know, I just try to do my part, and I just uh, one thing about me, whether it's personal, professional, music, I'm just very honest, you know. Yeah. Well, I think you you really hit something on the nail for me just just now, which is like for me, what I've noticed is um, a lot of artists have switched from they switch from the consciousness to what's popular and what's popular right now is uh, if we're being completely honest, there's anger management. Okay. 
there's a lot of a lot of angry yeah. rap out there right now. And instead of it being channeled into when you're teaching these younger artists when they're coming out, instead of it being channeled into something that they can proactively change within themselves. Not saying that it all has to be conscious, but there's consciousness that has a little playfulness to it, you know. Um and yeah, but the beats, yeah, like, but the, also the beats so are like, when you know, those beats come on, it's like, I haven't really been able to feel that in a long time. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times with that part of a beat, you get, you know, if whether it's um, yeah, toxic. Crap. Yeah, toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Crap. Like, who does your beats in your production? No, that was uh, for this project. I, I sorry. Sorry. Um, it's okay. My, my um, oh, this project it was crazy because I was writing this project, and one of my favorite producers hit me up, mm. and the algorithm. He was like, "Bro, this is hard." And then we started talking. I'm like, "Hey, let's do a project, you know, um, an exclusive project," and you know how the energy was going. Did an exclusive project. He sent me like hundreds of beats. Um, yeah, and I selected those, and I have a few that's going to be on the deluxe project that's coming out in the spring. Um, but I was able to get, you know, sometimes we buy beats or because we bought it, uh, we felt like we owe it to ourselves to use that beat. You know, we force ourselves. And don't get me wrong, everything's an investment, so I get it. I used to do that, you know, like if I paid for this beat, I'm using this beat and maybe, maybe two months from now, you don't feel the same way about it, you know, mm-hmm. or the way you wrote that verse now, it doesn't deliver the same, you know, mm-hmm. but we still release it, you know, cause we have so many things on us. Like, you know, with this project, I was able to do exactly what I wanted. I didn't settle and I don't settle, but I didn't settle for anything like a bar. I didn't take a bar off. I didn't mispronounce a word I didn't like. I didn't have the beat exactly how I wanted it laid out, stems, everything. Like I made sure everything was a hundred percent what I what I wanted. Uh, and then also I've learned you got to keep it simple. So it was twenty six minutes. If you can't sit through twenty six minutes of rap, I don't know what to tell nobody no more either. That's another problem. People want to come out with twenty songs, and the album is an hour and a half. And like if you're not twenty savage with these people you can't do that you know what i'm saying so like for me if you don't have 26 minutes to take out of your life to listen to my project that can help your life i don't get it it's 26 Mm -hmm. minutes you know what i mean yeah and feel free to be free to make an album that's two hours long because we will (laughs) we'll run it up i'm planning i'm planning we'll run it up (laughs) we got you Deluxe version. Yeah. yeah, we we need it to be a little longer. Yeah, but that's why yeah. I got the deluxe version coming too. So it's gonna be like six to eight more songs that mm-hmm. I'm learning the algorithm, right? So so you come out with a deluxe, and then now they have to listen to the whole project again. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So like, you know, picking from. So how? Oh my bad. Okay. No, I'm done. I was done. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I was wondering how long it took you to to work on that album. You know, mm-hmm. twenty six minutes. It seems like. You know, it's not too long. How how many months or years did you work on it? So you're not gonna believe me, because again, learn, unlearn, relearn. I probably made in like two months. Moves of wisdom was probably a month. Whoa, whoa! And wounds of wisdom, well, it's a couple verses, but maybe like two verses that I had written and tucked away. Um, but everything else was written in a month within a month. And I tell you, I was depressed because. I was also a recovering alcoholic, right? Um, so I stopped drinking a lot a while ago. I still drink from time to time, but that was my first session. So I lost my tolerance. I lost everything. Booked an eight-hour session. First two songs clean. Everything else, slurred, slurred. I have a lot of people there. I'm just, what the? What? What am I doing? It was also I didn't recognize my tolerance. I was feeling good. I was happy. Whatever. So I said, nah, dog. So I booked I booked the session the next week. 
with that, I recorded Wounds to Wisdom in like under four, under three hours. Wow. And it was, that's how oh. hard I was and mad I was at myself for the previous week. But mm. I, rec I recorded Wounds to Wisdom in no more than three hours. Recording. Three hours. And all I had to do after that, and I have witnesses, we have people that were there, but like, I literally, <laughs> I, was, I was so disappointed in myself the week before. I recorded that project and promise you less than three hours and then everything else was mixing, engineering, arranging the order of it. But the recording of it, me, everything mm. I needed was done under three hours. So huh. it took me within a month and I recorded that project in three hours. So did you practice every single day? No. No? No. Just and one thing about down. one thing about me, my verses are never the same because I'm very just free, if I will. Like like I don't rap every single thing the same. Every single thing the same cadence. I rap how I feel when that beat come on and how I feel for that part. So it's not mm. like I redo it and it's the same way. It's not. Um, I'm just kind of like vibing, going off energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was dope. Yeah, I can feel that with each song. There's different styles and deliveries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm curious because you mentioned some influences that you had and none of them really ring a bell to me. Are these like local um, people or? Oh, um, well, Reasons is with, uh, Reason is with, um, with, TDE with uh, mm. Kendrick and them. Um, okay. Oh my God. Um, who else? Andre 3000 is my favorite rapper of all time. Let me just put that out there. I don't know how I feel about the suit thing, but I'm going to digress. Um, <laughs> see, I'm going to digress on that. But yeah, the dude with Naomi Corday, you know, he's mm. the guy, the rapper with uh, Naomi Osaka. Yeah, um, I know who Corday is. He's pretty. He's Corday. pretty cool. His first album was dope, but then I think he followed the trend with the second mm -hmm. one. Um, so I wasn't really a big fan of that. Uh, everybody else, you know, Cole Kendrick, JID is with. JID is a really good rapper. I don't know who he's with. Um. Yeah, but not. They're pretty established artists. You know, they're really they're pretty established artists. Um, mm hmm. And I'm just trying, I know what I just, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just feel like I'm there or better than them. I just got to keep putting work in. You mm -hmm. know, it's not my journey. Yeah. What you is for you. What you is for you. You know? Yeah. Well, if you're better than a lot of people that I've ever heard. Yeah. You're one of the best that I've ever heard. I appreciate yeah. I think I, I believe that and I'll take, I receive that too. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm curious, what is the local scene for you like out there? Do you perform? Um, do you, is there a, you know, obviously I say New York is probably the, the deepest roots of hip hop and rap. Yeah. Um, how do you mingle out there? You know, uh, we just see you from afar on social media. Mm. Um, you know, we, we stream you, but, uh, how, how is your album received out there and what kind of fan bases and, and community do you tap into with your music? Um, it's building every day. That's just the part I, uh, that I'm working on to get it. Because I want everything to be authentic. Um, you know, I'm in hospitality, so I'm a general manager of a restaurant in Harlem. Um, so I get a lot you know, DJs playing their music. A lot of people come mm -hmm. here. It's a lot of block parties during the summer. Um, I have the merch, the Will Be Free merch. Um, um, so it all kind of intertwining, meets people, networking. I'm getting to meet people. Um, this, mm -hmm. you know, in the last six months, I've been able to network and meet more people to help me ascend um, naturally, though, organically, not forcing anything. Because I don't force anything. Sometimes I probably lose opportunities, not not uh, uh, immersing myself in certain situations. Um, but I'll take that because you know, uh, I have met a lot of people like my, the people in my phone now versus the people that I had on my phone six months ago. You know, it's crazy, like how you said you're 97 episodes when you see the growth and the evolution and everything. So I'm experiencing that part now. Um, performing is the easiest part because mm. I just get to express myself. It's like I'm talking. I'm not even rapping because I'm telling you my life. So it's not even like a effort thing with me. Uh, so I'm getting back to there. I think the next part for me is uh, quick uh, videography part of it. 
which is a big investment, and I just want to make sure I do it the right way, the way I want to do it. Uh, because impact is everything. Every whether I'd rather come do nothing than do something that doesn't have that impact feel that I want it to have. So, but I'm oh. just working. It's all progressing. I felt. I feel yeah. that. I feel that. Yeah, I feel like you know. First of all, we're gonna do whatever we can to share your mm-hmm. music. Um, to to stream it, put it on our playlist. We have several playlists on Instagram, and we got Mixtape Queens Radio, the Digital Mixtape, and uh, several other streaming playlists that we mm-hmm. curate. So, um, and speaking on that, everybody that's watching, make sure y'all tap into those links below. Go follow Will Be Free on all of his platforms. Go show some love. Go show out. Go subscribe. Go follow. Let's let's boost. Let's be the community. Spread the vibe. Spread the music. It's worth it. It's worth it. And it's worth it. And that's the one. Yeah. Stop sitting there complaining that you don't like mainstream, that music isn't what it used to be, and go find the artists that are out there. Yep. And there's millions. It's not a popularity contest. Go find Mm -hmm. the music that you like. It's out there. Check out. Seize the soul. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Check out any playlist and, and do some searching. Support your. Your local artists too. That's right. Okay, so we wanted to try something real quick that we've never done before. Let's do it. And so the plan is to, uh, we want to choose a, a random word mm-hmm. and kind of do like a freestyle uh, word of the day, and mm-hmm. we'll just share our thoughts. We'll we'll pass it around. I'll go first, mm-hmm. and we'll pass it around to you. And we want to freestyle. On a, on a word, just sharing yes. our thoughts and uh, see what we come up with, try mm-hmm. something new. So, mm-hmm. okay, so we have, mm-hmm. you know, we're running it through the universe and we're going to pick something. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah. Okay. So the word is serendipity. Yeah. And let's see, the meaning of that word is. Um, it's really a way of making, it's really like lucky in making unexpected and fortunate discoveries. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you were really lucky in finding this, even though you're probably planning on doing something else, you know? Right. Kind of like a, 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 a random act of luck. Yeah. That I think some people might say the opposite of that is like coincidence Mm -hmm. and i think coincidence is an evil word that was used to make us believe that things aren't really special Mm -hmm. and i think serendipity is kind of the opposite of that finding that joy and that happiness in that moment and Mm -hmm. seeing it as um a spark of light or um a ray of hope that there is a bigger magic working in your favor yeah so serendipity for me, um, you know, it would be just the way that we connect with our people, our tribe, mm-hmm. um, like at putting everything that we do into the mixtape queens, we put our heart and soul. So I would say serendipity is, or a serendipitous moment would be like meeting you for the first time today. This is serendipity for me because mm-hmm. you never know what connection you might make you know, what day you might check your email or mm-hmm. when somebody really is recognizing the, the the work that you put in. And yeah, I like that. So what about you? Oh, serendipity is like, for me, this is the example I'm going to use. I think every artist wants to live a serendipitous life. I think serendipitous. Yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. what it is. So I'm going to go with it. It's a serendipitous life. Mm-hmm. Um, a life full of luck, you know, and prosperity and, and very fortunate events happening for them. Like, say they booked one place and that place is like, oh, we're sorry we messed up your thing. And then they go to the next place and they're like, actually, we want to book you for the next 10 shows. That's serendipity to me, you know, like, oh, how lucky of me to have, you know. You yeah. think you're taking an L, but really you might be getting set up for something greater. So yeah. that's serendipity. 
that serendipity to me. I've been messing with this word. Okay. Serendipity. No, serendipitous. <laughs> well, right. okay. For me, I don't know if this fits entirely. I think my life, my entire life has always been, I've never been given too much without having to I don't know. Things have never been meant to be easy for me. So, like, all the good, like, okay. So, it's a serendipitous moment. I started general manager at this place last February, right? Um, My whole purpose is to bring people together, my whole personality, all of that, all of that. Uh, So, I've met a lot of people. I've, I'm helping to groom a lot of young adults into becoming better adults, into becoming adults. I've met friends, my Rolodex. But the company I work for is abs- like they just horrible, <laughs> like it's horrible, like it's horrible situation, you know. So it's like mm-hmm. I'm lucky that I met so many people, but why I got to go through this? When is going to be my boiling point to walk away from it? I don't know. I probably not answer the question, but even though all those negatives, I'm blessed to be there and meet so many people, and it changed my life because I was almost over, mm-hmm. like almost I was almost out for the count. And, uh, you know, working at this place brought me back to life in so many other areas. And, yeah, that's all I got. I'm sorry. Well, that is serendipitous. <laughs> Honestly, that's serendipity for real. Because when you think about it, you may feel like you have been unlucky in the job that you were given, but you were very fortunate and, like, unexpectedly to have this opportunity to meet all these different people and like you're making connections out of this situation that's supposed to be bad for you or you know not so good or the way you wanted it to go but you're still finding yeah you're calling yeah it's like um that saying that they always say oh when when god closes a door he opens a window so it's like serendipity you know, that's it. That's it. Right there. Yes, they're indigenous. Thank you. Yeah, and I know it probably happens a lot in New York um, with the the level of artistry mm-hmm. with rappers and hip hop out there. It's you know obviously legendary, and but I'm just wondering how many people that actually come to your restaurant or meet you and they don't know that you're like this amazing rapper. <laughs> so that's pretty cool because you. You yeah. never know who, who's, you know, uh, around you, who you're meeting yes. at some time that seems like, oh, it's just a manager or uh, oh, yeah. just a waitress. And they're like s- someone that could probably change your life if you really dive into your music. Yeah. So the great part and the good, bad and different part of that is like, I've met a lot of, I've met a lot of people that didn't know or felt it through my presence. I've met some people that didn't know. Most people... I'm I'm also, you know, different curse. I'm I'm very humble. You know, life if you don't know, you don't really know. I don't sell myself. Like who I am sells myself. Like people see me and my stature and then they see who I am and then I kinda gain a lot of more organic relationships through that because they're like, Why you say that? You know, like and it's like, Well, I, I just don't know how to do that. I'm will be free, I rap, I'm the best like I just, you know, good, bad and different, I lose in that way too. But uh that's people, okay. We'll tell yeah. everybody. Like, yeah, we'll tell everybody for we'll you. We'll make sure they find yeah. out. I mean, honestly, I think that's a good, that's like one of the best qualities you can have as a creative is humbleness. Yeah. You know, um, and and just to clarify to everybody that's listening, if you're an artist, don't feel bad about being humble. Humble is not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you're lowering yourself to other oh, yeah. everybody else's yeah. standards of what they want you to be. It's you knowing, like, you can know inside that your your artistry is top tier. But, and that's a humble brag. You can say my artistry is top tier. But like he just said, it's not about you being like to everybody else trying to prove a point. Oh, I'm better than everybody else. You don't have to do that. You are your own authentic self. You walk your own authentic path. And your story is uniquely for you to tell, you know? 
So that's pretty dope. Yeah. Humble, being humble is just like confidence, but in mm-hmm. the way of like loving yourself mm-hmm. to where you don't have those doubts. Mm-hmm. And, and I know who I am. I'm not here to show you who yeah. I am, but I that am part. here to show you who I am. You know? Uh, yeah. If y'all didn't get that one, run it back. If y'all didn't get Before we get off of here, we want to ask you something that we ask everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a multitude of listeners around the world. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're in strange times always, right? We're just these weird aliens like flying around on a rock. Mm-hmm. It's it's creepy, it's weird, it's cool. <laughs> you know, some of us handle it better than others. Um, what advice do you have to give to anyone out there that's listening right now? And uh, they may be going through a hard time or any type of struggle. Mm-hmm. What could you tell them that may... Uh, giving us some motivation or some inspiration. Man, first of all, it's a loaded question. Look in the mirror. Good, bad, and different. Talk, talk that ish to yourself. Mm-hmm. Find out. Do you love yourself? You know, I dealt with that. I didn't. I'm still working on it. Um, but what I would say, forget about what I just said. Give yourself grace. Life is hard, bro. Give yourself grace. And the biggest impediment to the people in this world is comparing themselves to somebody else. Mm. If it's healthy competition, if you want to get to their greatness and it's healthy, all for it. But comparing yourself to somebody else, looking at what somebody else is getting and doing and having, that is one of the biggest things that's ruining our culture. Because what that person does, I'm great. I'm happy for everybody. But what it, their, their life isn't our life. They're, they didn't go through what we went through. Good, bad, and different. You know, we have more struggles. We have less struggles. They have money. They have family. So having a family don't mean you're richer in the mind because mm. all of your family was there. Maybe mm. you were coddled. Maybe you were spoiled in certain areas that you don't have mm-hmm. the maturity that I may have and vice versa. I've been by myself. So all I know is to be by myself. I don't know how to bring people in, blah, 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 but have grace. And there is no competition, bro. We all have our own right race and we lose trying to be in competition with everybody else. Who are you? You are mm. great. You are the greatest. You are the impact. You are the stone. You are the gem. You are the infinity stone. You, you. Now we can have a hand that have five stones there, but you are one of them stones on that hand, period. I'm happy for all all them other stones bring, but your stone is what what you bring to this world. Mm. You. So just have grace with yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. And the person left or right of you, love on them, but don't look at what they make or how they look. We all got struggles nobody ever know about. That's all I, I mean. I don't know, but like, I, I don't want to use the word hate, but just people comparing themselves to somebody else when you don't know anything about that person it drives me insane. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Got no idea what someone's going through. Right. And, awesome. you know, we thank you for that message because that's probably one of the most profound ones that we've had on the podcast. And I'm just super excited that we had this opportunity to talk yeah. to you and get to know you better yes. and expose you to our people who are going to tap in with you in the yeah. links below this podcast episode. Do not forget to hit up. We'll be free. We'll Go be free. like, All comment, right. subscribe. And it's W I L B. Just a letter. W I L L. Okay. W I L L B. Just a letter. F R E E. Will be free. Links below. Tap in with this king. He is absolutely incredible. No, seriously, we'll pause while you go scroll down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right now. Right now. Go ahead. Don't don't wait. Go. Do it now. Right now. Drop a comment. I'm not playing. If you enjoyed experiencing this experience with Will Be Free. Yes. 
go drop a comment right now. Share yes. this, run it up, show the love, and make sure to love yourself at the same time. For them. I mean, every day. Every, every day. Because your biggest competition is who? Self. Nobody. The man in the mirror. Competition doesn't exist. Everybody. Yep. Yeah. And no days that you don't love on yourself like that, give yourself grace. That's it. Yeah. There you go. Stop being so hard on yourself. Period. Yeah. It's all good. Yes. So thank you so much, King. We appreciate you. We're sending you so much love. You are awesome. And we pray that you have a great rest of your week. Hey, we in we in the family. We locked in now. So only up from here for all of us, individually and together. Yes. Yep. Got your heart. There we go. Peace. All right, love you, King. Peace. Thank you. You all too. Thank you.